Okay, so good morning. <coughs> this is my my second vlog. Uh, today is the 29th of May 2017. Uh, so I'm supposed to to be in UP to cover the the event. Uh, I think that's a final presentation of research outputs under the linguistics class of Professor Rick Nolasco. And uh, since that, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I feel under the weather. I felt that it's my body, their, their body pains, uh, specifically back pain and um, it is a bit weird uh, day because last night I, I started to feel uh, nauseous last night maybe it's because of maybe prolonged uh, sitting uh, doing blogging and so after I did my I did have my dinner. I felt something weird, but then it's okay. Uh, well, it's really not okay for today because I already informed the professor that I might not be able to make it today. However, well, good thing that uh, there's still tomorrow the second day for their presentation of outputs well I have read some of the PowerPoint presentation and I found most of the studies if not all really interesting mostly studies are focused on the grammatical categories of of Tagalog uh, comparing features like uh, seemingly seemingly the same features for example mukha tila parang uh, mostly on papers are actually investigating on the epistemic modality of the grammatical functions of Tagalog and I encountered one which actually looked into the discourse of uh, Tagalog. Uh, I encountered one that used that used narratives in romance novels. No? My only question there is how authentic would the data be if it was taken from a from a romance language a uh, romance novel right um, well I already did inform the professor that I might not be able to make it but after I took psychast psychast is good for uh, those who have allergic rhinitis so I think that after taking Psychast I felt a bit better uh, but I'm still maybe trying to relax and then well it's always relaxing to do the blog but the problem with blogging is the prolonged period of time sitting would also be not good for my back so but for now I have I've only checked to the Facebook because uh, there is that fan page and so I'm thinking of maybe taking a bath after and then maybe I'll feel a little better or maybe I can just rest for a while maybe take a morning nap then let's see 
uh, 9.30 I'll sleep and then let's see if I if I wake up in a, uh, wake up after we'll see if uh, I feel a bit better uh, there is really nothing much to say now uh, well I'm not supposed to move my feet this is what I observed yesterday when I move my feet uh, it's a distraction in vlogging so, <clears throat> so day, day two or vlog do you still see I'm wearing the same shirt well basically in Manila you have to really have to be thrifty you really have to have that certain level of thriftiness in order that well I have just started to use this yesterday so two days wouldn't really be that gross so Ariel told me that I have to have a tripod so that I won't be really tired and holding the camera <clears throat> so later if God permits uh, I'd be proceeding to UP and hopefully cover certain footages that be of help uh, that be of help and be relevant relevant to uh, my students uh, research particularly the AB English students so it's a good thing that I can actually uh, transfer file directly from the iPhone to my to my WizBook laptop um, and I was able to download uh, an app but the problem there is that there is no music background so I have to look for if there is a Windows app for show uh, video show because video show somehow I was able to master how to crop cut paste and then uh, play a bit with the play tricks with the, the music uh, so let's see you know, uh, hopefully uh, after rest 9.30 if I feel good then I'll take a bath then I'll perhaps I can go 10 o'clock uh, UP is in the Leman, so it's quite far I would, wouldn't want to take the commute from Taft to to the Leman because it's a bit far it's a bit stressful so I take the cab and then hopefully I'd be able to leave at around 10 so that it wouldn't really be that hot uh, and then uh, I hope to reach UP by 11 so maybe I'll just look for a place to have lunch there in time for the for the one o'clock session so it, I think it would really be a brain-wracking experience uh, well the good thing there is that we were promised that there will be uh, free food uh, I think that's the advantage of attending sessions like this because there is free food but I'm not going there for free food I'm actually uh, going there to learn something and of course to contribute with my critique hopefully they will learn something from me uh, and let's see if uh, I would be allowed to take a vlog if I'd be taking uh, if I'd be allowed to take some certain footages and even I hope to get an interview with the uh, B Nolasco well Nolasco is known for his uh, studies in different languages he is a guru as well when it comes to multilingual uh, mother tongue multilingual education mother tongue based multilingual education so, so 
one of the proponents. Uh, I conducted several lectures. In, in fact, he traveled nationwide to actually uh, promote uh, MTBMLE uh, along with uh, the Decker Couple. Um, what is really interesting, what, is, what, what I'm excited about this session is that this is rare. Uh, not everyone is given the chance to to be invited in UP. Uh, to be invited by a professor in UP is such a great honor. Uh, Nolasco was the one who invited us, my wife, to attend the conference in Ojongan. And that was the time that uh, we had uh, we had our vacation. We uh, uh, dropped by uh, Katiklan, and so we had our vacation in uh, Boracay. And after that, there is a, a ferry or a small boat that uh, actually bring passengers to Santa Fe. If I'm not mistaken, that's a that's a place in Kajongan. It was a great experience uh, visiting the heart. Actually, Ojongan is the heart of... Did you know that Ojongan is the heart of uh, the Philippines? If you look at the map, it's actually the heart of the Philippines. And I have nothing negative things to say about the experience, the place, the food. I wouldn't forget the Tinola served. I think that's a native Dinola served in conference and then we had uh, dined. But the most uh, memorable experience there was I tried with my ignorance, played with jellyfish. Do you know that jellyfish is dangerous? You can die if it will uh, if it will be if it will stick on your skin and you will get that re uh, allergic reaction, then you will have to be hospitalized. The good thing that there was no contact. I was playing with them, but almost, it's like they're coming near to me, all of them, and then I was thinking that, uh, what, will I hold them or not? Maybe that's the point where I believe in angels. At times, like when you're at risk, and so there is the decision to do this, to hold them, to connect with them, or to touch them or not. And so I did not. There was that feeling that I was, I turned afraid about them. I became afraid about them. And so that was a moment where I felt that someone is really helping me. And that's the presence of the angels. Otherwise, I will be hospitalized in Ojong and if if I get in contact, like if they will stick on, especially on your navel side, just like what happened to Aunt Curtis. Aunt Curtis um, almost really died with the uh, jellyfish. Although I'm a bit exaggerating, but it could be life in that scenario when you will be uh, hit with the allergic reactions of the substance that jellyfish would stick on your skin. And so, uh, I'm, I'm honored to be always be invited by Dr. Nolasco. I met him way back in Sambonga City when he was doing a lecture on, on MTBMLE. I think that was five years ago in Ateneo de Zamboanga University where he was lecturing about uh, positive and negative effects of, uh, of students who are not exposed to mother tongue based education and those who are exposed to mother tongue based education and of course he reported on the current status of the educational system across content learning areas and so I am honored to be invited by uh, Dr. Ricardo Maria Nolasco. And I hope to, even if I'm not really 
but if I feel under the weather today, I would still have to find time to uh, meet this fatherly friend, actually a mentor as well. There was a time in the past, two years ago, I was invited to review papers, review research works, but it was a different format at that time. And I was thinking, and they were, most of the students were doing a phonological aspect of linguistic uh, processing, or if I may say, there is a developmental aspect where they are analyzing the phonological aspect of uh, sounds uh, in, in English, uh, not only in English, but different languages. It's a bit uh, not, not at that moment, at that moment, not part of my research agenda. That's why I felt that it wasn't really doing well for me. And so what I did was I, 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 I think I wasn't able to continue because of uh, issues as well in my work. Now that I'm here in Manila, uh, we are rekindling. So there is rekindle of partnership with the great uh, Rick Nolasco. And this guy really loves to, uh, to eat and have fun. He always uh, is just a breath of fresh air whenever I see him. So later, after the, the critique after the session I hope to have maybe dine with him and talk to him and interview him and hopefully would say yes uh, well who could resist this face right so who could resist the persuasion of Arnel so well if they will just realize the importance of this blog this blog is actually promoting research Right? I am actually promoting the culture of reading, writing, and doing research. That's the only way it is, right? So if there, is, there are groups of people who are supporting certain propaganda and trying to develop a culture of violence, why not develop a culture of reading and writing? Correct? And, you know, Filipinos in general, if I may generalize, we love the camera, we love selfies, we love groupies, right? And then we love uh, to publish our knowledge, we love to publish our, our thoughts, our feelings, even, the, even negative thoughts, curses. So why not publish something that is worthwhile? Why not publish that is informative? Why not popularize research, right? So this is what we're doing. I'm trying to encourage all my students, Luzon, besides Mindanao, to, to read. We are establishing, we need to, to really try to go against that current. But then they say that, well, as of now, the culture is too shifting from what is supposed to be uh, democratic freedom uh, like culture shifted to uh, the notion that the dictatorship would uh, somehow help so with all the propaganda here and there so we're establishing a culture of of dependence towards a leader rather than depending on our judgments out of our readings, out of our logical thinking, out of our uh, logical thinking. Now, if a country is not really a culture of readers, that is where the problem would lie. Uh, we would just be submitting to the fallacy of bandwagon. So whatever uh, whatever they say, whatever the popular culture would dictate, then uh, that is what would happen. So what I'm trying to do here is to promote research because research is supposed to be promoting 
good thinking skills, right? So, here we are. In UP, I, I will not be there to talk about politics. I, I will be there to talk about, well, for one, uh, uh, analyze the Tagalog language. And that language is, the purpose is actually to... This is, in social linguistics, this is uh, language maintenance or language change. So, this exercise, so research exercise, would train our students to uh, that feeling of humanity to preserve, to maintain certain language. Without them doing that in their readings, the process of doing research would entail a lot of discipline and that that discipline will lead to logical thinking and that logical thinking would somehow help us to shift eventually in the future that martial law is not okay. See, logical th training students to be logical thinkers would have a great impact on this nation. Otherwise, if we don't do something about their thinking, then I think we will be doomed for per perdition. So, yeah, that would be it. So let me rest. Then afterwards, uh, wake me up at 9.30. I'd be uh, setting an alarm. And then if I'd be waking up at 9.30, then see you in UP, right? So see you later.